koning van die townships die Rudy Daniels. Een onrustige afwachting hang oor Elsie's rivier, want dit is vandaag die begrafenis van die beruchte bendeleier Jacob September, alias Seppi. An uneasy anticipation hangs over Elsie's river, because today is the funeral of the notorious gang leader Jacob September, also known as Seppi. Schoolwift in die omgeving sluit hul skole vir die dag uit vrees vir hernude bende geweld, want wraakpraakies leid die hele woonbeet vol. Principals in the area close the schools for the day. They are um, worried and um, scared of renewed gang violence because revenge talk is all over the, um, all over the neighborhood. Daar sal in elk geval geen school kan wees nie, want te veel ouwers het besluit om hulle kinders by die huis te hou. Die politie teenwoordigheid in die woonbeerd herinner sterk aan die politieke onrust en riots in die 80 jare. There will not be school in any case because too many parents would keep their children at home. The police presence in the neighborhood reminds one of the political unrest and riots in the 80s. A konvooi splinter nieuwe BMW's lei die lijkwaar die kerkgrond binne, terwijl bende lede op aandag staan. A sarsie skote word die licht ingevier om nog meer aan een militaire begrafenis te herinner. A konvooi of brand new BMW's lead the way of the funeral car towards the church grounds um, and while the gang leaders um, stand at attention. Um, shots are fired in the air and it makes one think of a mili military um, funeral. Dit was nie heel te mal onverwachts nie, to Seppi, atletisch gebouwde 17-jarige graad 11 leder, op daar die triestige juni ochend sy boeken op meneer Bryden sy rekening kunde onderwijzer tafel kom plaas met die woorde, dis nou finaal. It was not totally unexpected when Seppi, an athletically built 17-year-old grade 11 learner, uh, one day on a very gloomy morning put his books on Mr. Bryden's, his um, accounting teacher's table and with these words, this is final. Nie enige kere, as Seppi voor school by sy klas ingegrip het om privaat met hom te gesels, het hy al gedreig om die school te verlaat. Many times before school when Seppi uh, slipped into his um, classroom to speak to him privately, he, um, he threatened to leave school. Fear and trots het hy daar gestaan. Nie die bedremmelde patetische figuur van iemand wat so pas handdoek ingegooi het nie. Fiery, upright and proud he stood there. Not the um, um, someone who gave up hope and pathetic figure of someone that just gave up on everything. Nie hield hem al onverwachts nie, want hy ken toch Seppi sy omstandighede in Elsie's rivier, sy flat, sy baie goed, a werkloose pa en a dronk ma. Not unexpected, because he knew Seppi's uh, circumstances in Elsie's rivers flat, uh, the flats where they stayed, a uh, um, unemployed father and a drunk mother. Hy het nie veel aandig aan Seppi se woorde geskenk nie. Hy is een oorwerkte onderwijser met oorvol klasse. Seppi is maar een van vele leders wat die school vroeg verlaat. En wat er verskil sou nog een skolie in Elsie's rivier toch maak? Um, Seppi's words, um, he didn't um, pay much attention to Seppi's words. He is an overworked teacher with overpopulated classes. Seppi was one of the learners that left school early. And in any case, what would another one scully or gang member in Elsie's rivier uh, make, uh, make a difference? Of miskien was Seppi se geval anders. Juist omdat hy een van sy meer intelligente leders en kaptein van die rugbyspan was. Or maybe, in Seppi's case, he was different because he was one of the more intelligent learners and captain of the rugby team. Hy weet dat Seppi een gebore leier is en dat hy met nodige hulp en leiding een belangrike leier in die gemeenskap sy word. 
He knew that Seppi was a born leader and with a little bit of help and um, guidance, he would become an important leader in the community. Die skrif was seker reeds aan die meer, toe hy opgehou het om rugby te speel, so dat hy smidda en naweke as taxi guard kon gaan werk, vir geld wat sy ma en pa in elk geval uitsuip. It was the end of the end of the story. The writing was on the wall when he stopped playing rugby so that every afternoon, Smidda, and weekends, he could be a taxi guard to earn money, which his mother and father in any case drank out or spent on alcohol. Uit bloot in neskierigheid besluit meneer Brandon, um, Bryden om die begrafnis by te woon. Hulle was een gezonde verstand vir hom sê dat het riskant is, want as die ander bendes jou by so een begrafnis sien, out of sheer curiosity, um, Mr. Bryden decides to go to the funeral, although he knows that that is um, a very risky because the other gang members, if they see you at a funeral, so as een van die familie gaan plaas hy ook een blommiekie op die oorledene, like one of the family, he places one of a small flower on the deceased. Hy is net bezig om so by homself te reken dat het een mooi lyk is, want hy het een prachtige pak kleren en das aan en sy vingers, waar het voor sy boors gekruis is, het elkeen een gouwe ring aan, toe hy in die lyk sy gezicht kyk. He was just thinking by himself what a what a nice looking corpse it is because he's wearing a beautiful um, suit and um, tie and on his fingers um, each finger had a golden ring that was crossed over his chest when he looked at his face. Voorkop uitgetoetier, kyk vir jou maase. Die grootste gedeelte van die diens gaan by hom verby. But that's when he looked at his face and saw that was tattooed on his uh, on his forehead. Look for your mother's expletives. Die grootse gedeelte van die diens gaan by hom verby, maar hy hoor daarom die pastoor praat van Cain en Abel. Bybelse gangs en brother Mo, wat die Egyptenaar vermoor het, maar die jimmelpoorte in, in is. The largest part of the ceremony goes past him. He does still hear about the uh, pastor that talks about Cain and Abel and the biblical gangs and brother Mo, um, who was an Egyptian, um, who killed an Egyptian, but still gained access to, to the um, to heaven. Snaaks genoeg. Seppi het nooit by enige spesifieke groep of bende by die school aangesluit nie, alhoewel hy beslis nie, a aan alleenloper was nie. Sy vriendekring was weit as gevolg van sy gewildheid as rugby speler. Seppi never um, joined any specific be, um, group uh, gang um, or any group at school, although he was not someone that was an outsider. His friendship group was far and wild and he was very he was popular as a rugby player. Alhoewel hy dit toe nie, nie toe besef het nie, het die ander leders altyd meer as net a bykie respect of was dit vrees vir Seppi gehad. Although he didn't realize it, he knew that he knew that the other um, learners did have a little bit more than respect for him or maybe it was fear. Nooit was hy openlik ongeskik of dreigend teen oor sy medeleders nie, maar as hy subtiel iets laat val het, het die ander geluister. He was never openly rude or threatening towards his other, um, to his peers, but when he subtly said something, the others listened. As a onderwijser aan een klasse sekere taak gee, is daar in enige klas altyd kinders wat hulle tyd wil verkoos. When a teacher in, uh, in class gives a task, there are always that group of children that want to waste time. Nie in Seppi's klas nie. Hy het net iets van rugby oefening gemompel en die hele klas was doodstil aan die werk. Not in Seppi's class. He just mumbled something about rugby practice and the whole class was quiet, busy working. Hoe kom dit nie toe by hom geregistreerd, weet hy nie. Maar een incident so nou soos a seer finger uit. He doesn't understand why it doesn't register with him now, but there was one incident that now sticks out and he remembers.
Dit was tijdens een groepwerksessie. This was during a group work session. Een groep het tamelijk luidruchtig hulle werk bespreek, maar nog voordat hij hulle kon aanspreek, het Seppie opgestaan en al richting gekyk en weer gaan sit. En middelijk het hulle bespreking tot een fluistertoon verdof. One group had a rowdy um, conversation about their group, about their group work. But before um, the teacher, he could um, address them, Seppi stood up, looked in this, uh, uh, towards them and went and, sit, and sat again. Immediately, their conversation um, went to a whisper, subsided into a whisper. Hiermee wil hy daarom nou nie voorgee dat Seppi een engelkie was nie. Hy het ook maar sy quota disciplinaire probleme gegee. With these examples, he does not want to pretend that Seppi was an angel. He also had his quota of discipline, um, discipline problems. Hy weet nie of dit net in sy klas waar, was waar hy hem so goed gedraad nie, want sy collega's het gereeld oor Seppi sy gedrag gekla. He doesn't know if it was just in his class that Seppi was well behaved, because his colleagues um, complained about Seppi's behavior um, um, quite often. Die hoofvind van sy collega's het dan ook gereeld gedruig om sy rugby spelerij te stop as disciplinaire maatreel. The principal and his colleagues also um, regularly threatened to stop his rugby playing as a discipline measure. Dan het hy maar weer gaan pleit met die argument dat Seppi die school gaan verlaat en een skolie gaan word as hy moet ophou rugby speel. Then he would go again and plead and beg with the argument that Seppi would um, leave school, become a scholar, and then he would stop playing rugby. Because that is actually what kept him at school. Want dit was eindelijk al wat om nog op school gehou het. Hulle het seker gekrul van lekkerte to Seppi self besluit het om op te speel. They probably squirmed of pleasure when Seppi decided by himself to stop playing. Misschien moet hij meer notitie geneem het van Seppi se afscheidswoorde. Solank ek lewe, sal meneer syf loop in die Elsies. Maybe he should have taken more notice of Seppi's uh, parting words. As long as I live, meneer will be safe and he can walk safe in Elsies. Verwijt begin aan hom eet en hom knaag. Blame starts eating at him. Misschien kon hy hierdie toekomstige leier van een gewisse misdaad lewe gered het, want gegee sy omstandighede was hy gedoemd tot een bende lewe. Maybe he could have saved this um, future leader from a life of crime. But given his um, circumstance, maybe he was doomed to gang's life. Maar wie steer hom nou ook aan een private van een hoerskoolleling? But who actually cares about the, um, a high school learner that has got um, a brave attitude? To die skote in die nacht in Asies rivier meer frequent geword het, het hy maar min daan gesteer. Want daar was toch een skills, skiet stilstand tussen die verskillende bendes dier die vredesvorm bewerkstellig. When the shots at night um, be, um, became more and more frequent, he did not... Um, think anything of it because there was a um, ceasefire that was negotiated with the peace forum. Verskillende benders speel eerder sokker tegen mekaar en drink wijn en rook dagge saam na die wedstrijd, althans, so hy dat gereneer. Different gangs would play, rather play soccer against each other, drink wine and smoke dagge after the uh, match, or so, he would argue. Oonskynlik het die inwoners van Elsies rivier in vrede geleef, alhoewel allemaal daarvan bewus was dat het maar een broose vrede was en dat die bendes nog steeds hulle onwettige bedrijvighede voortgesit het. Apparently, the, um, the people of Elsies River um, lived in peace, although everyone knew that it was a fragile peace and that the gang still went ahead with their illegal um, activities. Toch was die inwoners te vrede, want tenminste hoef hulle nie meer saans op die vloer te geslaap het uit vrees vir hulle dwaal koels nie. But the um, 
um, people who lived there was satisfied. At least they didn't have to sleep on the floor out of um, fear for um, errant um, bullets. Toe die geskieter uit in die nacht, echter die afmetings van een volskaalse oorlog aangeneem, 